Is chronic pain all in your brain? If your doctor made you feel like you're crazy, well, you're not alone. So many doctors, when somebody has chronic pain and they see them and they do all their tests and they say, well, your body is fine, therefore, it must all just be in your head. Well, guess what? You are not crazy. Your experience of pain is absolutely real, regardless of what the cause is. It's real. I'm Dr. Anthony Davis. I've had chronic pain and I've worked with a lot of people who have chronic pain in the clinic. Let's talk about this very, very touchy subject of is pain in the brain? It's a little bit weird, but let's get into it. Okay, one more time, I really wanna emphasize this because this is the absolute most important part that no matter what the cause of your pain, your pain deserves to be taken seriously. Your experience is real, no matter what. So even if pain was in the brain, your experience is still real and should be taken seriously by your healthcare providers. Now, let's break this down a little bit. So is pain in the brain? Well, technically, everything that we experience is actually happening in our brain, right? Because we don't directly perceive even like sensory information coming in from my fingertips. Even if I touch a hot stove and I have signals that go from my fingertips all the way up my spinal cord and into my brain, I'm not aware of the experience of touching a hot stove until it gets to my brain and my brain decides that it has an experience of pain, right? So pain is, is not a sensation. There, there are two different things here, sensations and experiences. So we have tons of sensations, right? I have tons of auditory sensations that are coming in through my ears all the time, right? So right now in the background, there are a lot of cars going down the street right next to me, but I don't even hear those things anymore because I've lived here for long enough. But when I first moved into this um, unit, I heard the cars constantly and it really bugged me. Well, my brain has started to deprioritize that information to the point where, you know, it's not like my ears are turned off. I'm still getting signals in through my ears, but I don't, I'm not consciously aware of the sensation coming from my um, auditory nerves. Or what about if you are talking with a close friend in a crowded restaurant? You're still hearing all of the other people talking, but you are not consciously aware of what they're talking about because you're focused on your friend and you're trying to catch up and so you're listening to what they're saying. So your brain is capable of filtering out information that it does not think is relevant and then giving you a conscious experience of the things that your brain thinks are important. So every experience in our life has to be conscious, right? Otherwise we don't experience it. So pain is an experience, not a sensation. So technically 100% of pain, even if you blew your leg off in a landmine or you burn your hands on a hot stove or you have a sunburn or you break an arm, you break your bones, still, Pain is in the brain 100% of the time. So here's the problem though, is if your doctor, if you have chronic pain and they, they, oh, you don't have any broken bones. Oh, there's nothing wrong with your spine. Oh, you don't have any torn muscles. So then it starts to feel like, oh, well then I must be crazy. Well, no, not at all. So just because you don't have a broken bone doesn't mean that your pain isn't real. So there's a difference between pain being in the brain, because all pain is in the brain, all of it, all of every experience is in the brain, but pain is still real. And that's the important part. So pain can be in the brain and be real at the same time. Because I mean, even if it's just in the brain, we still have electrical signals that are going on. We have chemical signals that are going on. We have um, changes in our immune system. We have change, changes in our endocrine system, changes in our blood flow, in our heart rate, in our muscles and bones that actually respond to thoughts. It's totally wild. But let's just say for the sake of argument that your experience of pain, just for the sake of argument, let's just pretend that it was 100% in your brain, 
Okay, well then what's gonna happen? Well, your brain is going to change the endocrine responses, the hormones that are circulating through your body. Well, that's a chemical, that's a physical um, change in your body. And those hormones circulating can change the way that blood vessels pump blood through or don't pump blood through your body. And then that changes the nutrients that your bones and muscles and tendons are capable of absorbing and waste products being um, swept away and rebuilding new tissue and becoming strong and resilient. So even if pain is significantly impact by our thoughts and emotions and our mental health even, well, that's still gonna have a physical response in the human body. It's still a tangible thing that's happening to your body. Your muscles get tighter, your posture changes, your activities change, your ability to recover from exercise changes. You're, you might start getting poor sleep as a result, and that will further impact your immune system, your endocrine system, your recovery, your muscles, your bones, your joints, etc. So mental things can still result in physical stuff and vice versa. You break a bone, and you can't go and do yoga anymore, and yoga was the one thing that you loved in your life, you know? Well, you try not to get stressed and depressed about that. So a physical thing can create a mental health concern, and your mind can create physical concerns. So there is a strong mind-body connection with everything in our life, but especially with chronic pain, because you have to live with it for so long. Of course, it's gonna seep into every aspect of our lives. So is chronic pain all in your brain? Well, technically, yes, but that's not really a helpful thing to say because the truth is that it's real. It's still a real experience and it still has tangible things that happen in your physical body as a result of that experience. And therefore, it requires a solution that not only addresses your mind, but also your body and your environment and your beliefs and attitudes, yes, but also your food, your sleep, your exercise, your culture, your uh, literally the environment that you live in, right? Is it a toxic environment? So all of these things play a role and so, yeah, it's not just that there's this one thing and if you just do this one thing, you'll magically be fixed. But it is important to understand that there is a strong mind-body connection with chronic pain and that does not mean that your pain is any less real or that it should not be taken seriously by your healthcare providers. And again, I think I've said this now, but I wanna be really clear. Just because there is a strong mind-body connection with chronic pain does not mean that you should only go to therapy for chronic pain, right? Because that's not a good solution. You shouldn't just go and talk about your feelings and then magically your pain is going to go away. Although it is a useful component of rehab, so therapy, counseling, having somebody on your side to talk to, um, to have a game plan for your mental health is absolutely an important part of rehab. But it shouldn't be the only part of rehab. Exercise should be a part of rehab, making sure you're getting nutritious foods and fueling your body up with really good stuff so that you can recover from exercise well. Getting good sleep having good sleep habits, not looking at blue light um, too late before going to bed, sleeping in the same place, sleeping in a safe place. And really the list goes on and on and on. So there are many, many, many things that some of them are controllable, like the things I just na named are all controllable things, but some are not controllable. Your genetics, you cannot modify, um, you, you can sort of modify how they express through the controllable factors, but you can't change the cards that you were dealt with at birth. So really the main point here is that I just want you to understand that there is a mental health component to chronic pain. It's not the only part of pain. It's just part of it, and it's part of it for everybody. In fact, it's not just with chronic pain. It's with acute injuries too. I have people come in all the time. They just rolled their ankle. They just tore a muscle. They just, you know, um, dislocated a shoulder. And you tell me that a person with a dislocated shoulder who used to be very active 
Tell me that that person is not gonna have any mental health concerns whatsoever as a result of having a dislocated shoulder and no longer being able to do the things they loved. They can't play guitar anymore, at least for a while. They can't, um, you know, they can't run and throw a ball for their kid maybe. Let's play, let's say they're a, a, a parent. They can't play ball with their kid. You tell me they're not gonna have any mental health concerns even with a dislocated shoulder? Of course they are. So. The mind-body connection is not just with chronic pain, it's with everything, it's with any health concern. Because having something affect your health negatively sucks, it just sucks. And it doesn't matter if it sucks for a day or a hundred days or 10 years, it sucks and we don't like it. So it's gonna impact your entire life. But as always, I wanna emphasize, there is a solution. You can always do something to positively impact your experience. So if your healthcare providers don't take it seriously, go find another healthcare provider that cares and will listen to you and values your experience and understands that your experience is real. I'm Dr. Davis, movement is medicine, motion is lotion. Thank you for watching. Feel free to disagree with me in the comments. I understand this is a difficult subject, I really do. I'm trying my best, I hope it helps. I'll see you in another video.